Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. As promised, let's talk about Gulf Oil Lubricants. That is the stock on our radar. Remember, uh, it reported numbers a while back. Uh, their EBITDA margins improved to 13.5%. Their profit after tax also jumped on a YOI basis by 29%. The stock has surged 108% in the last 12 months. We have Ravi Chavla, the MD and CEO of the company, joining us now. The stock is surging in trade today as well, up around 4 odd percent. Uh, Mr. Chavla, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, your operational performance has been strong in quarter three, but what explains that single digit revenue growth? It's up 5%. Can you split that up for us? Was there a volume decline that you saw? Uh, how are you trailing? Uh, how are you uh, performing when it comes to volumes in nine months? Well, I think the volume growth for us is intact. Uh, we grow normally two to three X the market. The market's been growing at 3%. We've been growing at 6%. Uh, obviously, we would like to do better, but we had some softness in the factory fill volumes, which is about 10% of our volumes. So besides that, all the other segments, the growth momentum has uh, continued. In fact, uh, back to back EBITDA, uh, you know, we've done 100 crores plus. In fact, quarter three is the highest EBITDA ever for us at 111 crores. So it continues in terms of our sustained focus on growth and profitability. Margins have improved. It's only the factory fill volumes where the revenue has come down. Otherwise, all other segments uh, which make up 90% of our sales is doing very well. We are growing double digit in many segments and infrastructure, B2B, all this. And I would also like to add that the market itself is doing well now. Overall, you can see growth in the lubricants market. And uh, certainly uh, for the next decade, Lubricants consumption is only going to be a positive growth in spite of uh, the EV and other penetration. Uh, so that's really a positive quarter for us uh, in terms of quarter three. So just to reiterate a couple of numbers from you. Uh, so would it be right to say that you expect uh, the industry to grow at close to two to three percent and you probably do two to three times, you know, what the industry does. So along with, you know, let's take into account six to eight percent of uh, year on year growth. Uh, what would be the kind of top line growth that you see, can we also factor in some pricing increases uh, from your end? Well, whatever studies we have, of course, uh, I must add here that last decade or so, we have been growing 2 to 3x the market, double digit volume growth. And uh, uh, the lubricant industry is obviously, uh, you know, slated to grow at uh, 2 to 3% or maybe a percentage higher. That's the volume growth. And therefore, the value growth will be slightly more because newer products, higher products, uh, lower viscosity, better uh, quality products, uh, premium products will come in. So the value growth will be higher than the 3%. And uh, certainly for us in Gulf, uh, we see market share growth across the key segments we are present in. So we would continue to look at 2 to 3x the volume growth. So if the volume growth is 2 uh, 3%, we would definitely grow 2 to 3 times that. And similarly, the value growth will bring in uh, the additional revenue, uh, which is over and above that. Okay. So I also want to get back to your point where you said lubricants industry has started to do well and that is something that you will continue to see as well. In that case, what's the idea around EV as a segment that you will be focusing on? Because even your peer Castrol spoke about getting into EV charging or EV fluids. Is that still a bigger part of focus across the segment or across the industry? Well, our five strategies to grow lubricants always continues. That is to look at our segment-wise approach or look at our brand our distribution, our OEMs and technology. This continues to uh, make us grow in the coal lubricants. The sixth leg I would say is to look at the EV space. Given that, you know, Gulf as a brand is present, we have distribution, we have OEM tie-ups, we have uh, also got, uh, you know, a lot of infrastructure customers and other B2B customers. We believe that the extension into EV, which is obviously using the, the assets we have, and of course, uh, you know, where Gulf is into EV fluids, which is a natural extension, which we already present with some OEMs. Plus it allows us, like we have now made some investments in the charger manufacturing area, both in terms of slow chargers globally. And uh, in India, we have invested in a, a DC charging company called Tyrex recently uh, with a 51% stake. So we believe that, you know, this is the sixth leg of our strategy, uh, five being in the coal loops area, and the sixth one is to look at the EV space. Okay. So you. Uh, you know, you've told analysts in a recent meet that you're targeting to keep uh, EBITDA margins in the range of between 12 to 14 percent and all efforts will be made to, you know, reach the upper end of that particular guided range. Uh, so what are the margin levels that you're seeing? And uh, if you could help us with a bit of a guidance in terms of top line, you know, top line you've spoken about, but in terms of margins for FI25? Well, you're right. We have indicated a 12 to 14 percent band to start with. And you can see this quarter itself is 13.59. 
So I think the stable input costs definitely help. Uh, obviously, pricing levels on, on the various segments we are present in, right from B2B, B2C to the OEMs, uh, there are different competition, uh, competitive levels we need to you know, uh, establish and we have that. So definitely we are looking at improving our mix of our products, improving, at, uh, improving our you know, range of uh, passenger car motor oils where our market share is low. And I would say overall, to get to this 12 to 14 percent band is what we have been talking about. And of course, then look at the next band of 14 to 16 percent. So I guess once we play out in terms of the market pricing and whatever the stable input costs are there, our other uh, you know engines of growth are going well, we would like to move to the next level. But uh, certainly now the objective is to be between the 12 and 14, which I think uh, this, in fact, last quarter we did invest a lot in our advertising. Uh, we continue to do that. And in spite of that, the margin growth has happened. So we'll continue at investing in advertising, looking at a product mix and trying for a higher band, for sure. Okay, so if you can give us a sense of what the ad uh, costs are as a percentage of revenue, and when you say so the normally, next leg of growth is... Yeah, Yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. No, so, so the next leg, leg of growth is 14 to 16%. Will it be led by uh, lower raw material costs, or will, you, will it also be led by newer products that are coming in your portfolio? Well, we try to do both. Of course, we can't control the input costs because they depend on uh, you know crude and base oil. So you're right in that. Obviously, these are the levers which we have, and we have got new products coming in. And uh, we're definitely looking at uh, you know going to uh, initially now it's 12 to 14 percent. And as we move forward, yes, new products are there. But the Indian market we also see is evolving into a lot of value products. While we have premium and higher end products, and of course, in different segments, the pricing plays out differently. We also see this year, there has been a lot of value products coming in. And you know, because prices have gone up the last 18, 24 months, and uh, most of us in the competition and us in the competition, we do have a value range which caters to the mid level uh, value range. And I think it's a mix of both. So we have to obviously cater to the consumer taste. And I think for us, uh, this is the objective where we can try to continue our growth, our market share growths, especially in segments where we are less than 5% like industrial, uh, passenger car, motor oil, uh, infrastructure, where we see we have a, you know, a lot of headroom to grow. And I think that's uh, been our mantra to kind of uh, focus on that. So one last question, a quick question. If you could clarify, you know, what is the kind of royalty that you've paying to the parent? Is the range between 1.8 to 1.9 percent of the total sales the right number? Any plans to bring it down in this quarter or from FI25 onwards? Well, yeah, we've discussed this with the analyst. I think uh, it has been steady at that range, and it has been at that range, so we don't see any uh, changes in that. And it's been uh, both for technology and the brand. Okay, all right, Mr. Chavla, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure speaking with you. We'll uh, do one thing now. We'll slip into another break. When we come back, we'll get you more on the markets and a lot of stock-specific action. So stay tuned for that.